all the way up here. All the way up here to hit boost. And you're not even driving it. It don't run. We gotta fix it. Let's go. Hey. Ah. So we made it back in Cincinnati. And um, flight was good. There was a little bit of turbulence and the little the shaking and landing and everything. It kind of shakes me up a little bit and I get sick super easy. So that was a little bit. But um, the guy sat right next to was talking about his BMW inline six cylinder. Um, it's like twin turboed or whatever. He said it has like 500 horsepower. So I've been gone for 80, 80 days. And here we got roast over here. Oh shoot, here it is. Post, post, post. <laughs> here it is. Shoot, this thing still works? Yeah. How's the garage? That bike's all taken apart? Yeah. It's flooded down. He's waiting for you to fix it. Shoot, it's super flooded. Oh, DRZ, this thing's glad to see me. Dang. We're back. We're back. Let's go. Let's see how this thing does. All right, so stick over here is fi finally starting to get good. This is a linkage bearing to my dad's old bike. And you can see the outside right there. He uh, bored it out and made a little sleeve that the needle bearing can press into because it was super worn out, flip it over. The other side, you can tell all right there, it's super worn out and old Shtick pressed a sleeve yeah, in there. What's that sleeve made out of? Stainless. Stainless? Actually, no, I think it's 4140. I mean, it's gonna be harder than that. This. Aluminum, I would think. Whatever that is. There's a little bit of yeah, surface rust, but- 4140 or something. It's kind of hard too. You can tell machine in it. You can tell them lines, like it's kind of. When I cut this piece off, it took a minute. Dang, what else you been doing since I uh, dipped out of here? Uh, it was cold and nasty when I left. <laughs> oh, <dang. laughs> All right, what is the PVC? What is this flange? That's a toilet in your closet. You bolt your toilet down with. All right, and then that comes up. This piece is glued on to that. Yep, and, and you a got cap. a little filament or something in there with the bolts, which well, are my bolts. At least a little bit at the cap. No. All right, regulator. Those, are, those aren't your bolts. Then that comes are out. OEM VW bolts. Battery. This car. What is this? A little, a little vent? That's a little vent. So if this system builds too much boost, this is a buff. Oh. Valve. It'll, 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 it'll. Ch ch wow. And you can fill it up right there. And you put baby oil in it. Yep. And it just burns that stuff. Yep. And then you leak test your system. Yep. I know you watched a YouTube video to make that. You're not that smart to come up with all that. <laughs> all right, all right, wait. A little bit of pressure. Oh, you gotta reconnect the battery. Oh shoot, there it goes. Huh. That's it. I can hear it coming out, but it's leaking past the valves, I'm sure. Cause I'm sure one of them are open on the intake. Dang, yeah, no leaks. It's already coming out of the exhaust? Yeah, I was gonna say that's where it's Yeah, it'll eventually come out once it fills it all up. But you got that big old three and a half inch. Yeah, oh, God, that's tough thing. Yeah, it does. Is that what that smell is? Yeah. I disconnected it. There's still smoke. Yeah. yeah. So it's good? I guess. The intake? All right, so Stick originally thought that his injectors were leaking. Can't really see it. There's a, there's a casting and then there's a vent that comes out, out of the bottom of this injector that the original like fuel system, it pumps air into the uh, intake and he had this hooked up to the intake and it blew all out of the injectors because these aftermarket ones don't have a seal in the right spot. So yeah, Stick originally thought, there you go. Oh, that looks bad. So yeah, that intake, what is that called? The uh, EVAP. I think EVAP. It's the EVAP system. So yeah, that looks terrible. So <laughs> that stuff stinks. Yeah. So pretty much you just need to cap that off, right? Yep. And you're good to go. And on this, uh, we welded on an eighth MPT on that little barb, and he's just gonna put a cap in that, and then that'll be like not even existing basically after that. Dude, this thing's sweet. That intake, that exhaust. Shoot, that header, I made that too. Boost. So on my van, my door lock actuator needs a thread on it. And uh, I'm gonna take these and these. You think they'll mess with me on the plane? Um, yeah, I need, it's either a three millimeter or four millimeter die and I'm gonna bring them both. You flew down. all the way up here 
just to get that. I flew all the way up here to get these. He's on, what else does this thing need? Is that it? That's it. You're driving this to Cletus? Yeah! Indy? How far is Indy? Hour and a half? Hour, 40 minutes. Will this thing make it that far? Bruh, I drive this thing max. It's fine. You beat on it? Yeah. It's, it's Any lag, you name it. It's good to go. Hey, this intake though, who made that? Me. <laughs> who, who made that flange that everything's bolted yeah, to? Yeah, right. Oh, so to make this a high flow fuel rail, you just bore out them holes in there? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that would work. That would. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> hey, yeah, look. I'm going to shout myself out. So I'm driving my van. Look, my van's not even here. It's gone. It's in Orlando right now because I'm driving to all, all the states and national parks. So I've been away for 80 days. 80 um, since February, and it is April 20 something, 29th or something. So my car's uh, been running. So his car's been days. running, but look, it's been it's been slow on the slow decline. Cause nah, stick over here is nah, rigging nah, stuff up. This thing's and broken in. You're good. rigging stuff That's up over here. Go. So if you have a 24 valve VR6, and you have this little uh, this little line on. Where's that vent at? You can't even see it. So it's right down there in front of my finger. So that line, dude, you don't, don't hook that up because it'll just be a leak around the injector and it'll come through that and you're gonna, you, you don't want it. Damn, <laughs> what just happened? It broke, hey, come on, hey! It's Easy. good, look, it's tight. It's tight, yep. all right. It don't, it don't come off, nope. that's good. Oh yeah, someone asked about these. These are EV6 to EV1s. And yeah, someone commented on this. And it would be nice if the injectors had the EV1 connectors because then you wouldn't have to have these little adapters. But we had to buy these just off eBay. And uh, shoot, they've been running good now for what, two, three years? Yeah, about, about two years. Holy crap, dude. Look, one, two, three, four, Five, six pistons. Six piston caliper off of uh, what? One uh, 17Z? 17ZL. What's that off of? What kind of? Brembo. Them Brembos. They're off of a uh, Volkswagen Touareg. Actually, that same Volkswagen Touareg, yeah. it's got a 3.2 V6. And VR. we're about to go get it. Yeah, we're about to go get that VR and I got a 2.8 crank sitting over here in a bag. Where's it at? Behind a welder. Oh, I see it on the, on the ground. Yep. We're going to take that crank, 2.8, yep. put it in that junkyard engine that we're going to go get, Uh huh. and make it a 3 liter. Get some DP pistons and rods. DP pistons and rods. Wait, them fit on here? Bro, the only way they fit is right here. You have to put these spacers. All right, so you have adapters, right? These For spacers. What are them, 20s or something? Yeah. The aluminum, uh, hold on, let this thing focus up. Yep, there you go. You have to put them spacers on. Hold on, does your wheel stick out at that point though? Yeah, but it's like, it looks good actually. It does? Yeah. You might have to roll it a little bit. Probably. But uh. It, the rim fits, that's a 17, right? Yep, there's clearance all the way around it. The tightest spot is like. Where's the adapters at? Are they in here? Like eight, seven, Easy eight. to get? That fits on there. Actually, I think it goes on the back side, like right. that, because that's why them counter bores are there, so the bolt. Okay. So that's through. And that goes on your stock spindle? Yeah, you got to put this on the stock spindle first, yep. obviously, because you can't get the... But yeah, the adapters work. Holy crap, dude. That is huge. Right, so here's a size comparison. This is a bottle of, uh, basically, once your wiper fluid. Yeah, you lay it, it's just as big. <laughs> that is huge. There's six piston, right? Yep. Um, All right, so we're busting out with the inches here, like 13. Oh, so the battery voltage is only 11.2. So it is low. What? You gotta charge that thing. That's low. Well, once I start it. If it starts. This is for the launch, for the, uh, yeah. like, anyway. So right here I got negative 17 and a half degrees timing for, to build boost basically. And the spark cut is cutting 85% of the spark out. Hmm. And then right here I don't have any 
wastegate override. So if I made this 100%, that would make the wastegate fully closed. Like it would never open. So it would build as much boost as it oh, could. Oh shoot. Yep. But you're only spooling, you're only going to 4,300 RPM. So. It's not gonna make that much boost anyway. No. Cause it's not that high. No. Wait, is 4,300 high enough for you to launch? Um, or you still gotta mess with it? I still gotta mess with it. I haven't really raced with it. True. And I know I had that at like 20%. So oh, the wastegate. So how much boost? How much boost were you making? Maybe like five or six psi. That's, and is that good I mean, enough for you? About what I need to be making. But when I took off, it bogged super hard. So I need to probably raise this a little bit. The RPM or the, the RPM. boost? Boost is probably good, but the RPM. Like the boost is there, but it just couldn't carry it because it was yeah, it just, just slipping. But yeah, activation TPS, so throttle position sensor. I have to hit the throttle 80% or more to activate the launch control. And I have to be going slower than two kilometers per hour. So if you're moving and it won't. So if I'm moving and I hit eight, over 80%, it won't, it won't do anything. Gotcha. So that's why these uh, graphs right here, everything before 80 has not changed. It's all zeros or 100. But everything after 80 is the only part I'm going to be messing with. Hmm. And like... Oh, because 80% is when yeah. it starts. And I had to change all these RPMs to like RPMs I would use. So I okay. started at 3000, went up to 54. So the launch is going to be somewhere in between that. Hmm. Same thing with these graphs down here. All right, so I had to set up the uh, VSS, which is variable speed sensor, yeah, to set up like the boost control and the launch control, because like you know how the launch control had had to be moving. Mm -hmm. So right here, I started with the speed source, and I'm using a wheel speed sensor. There's a bunch of different ones you can use, as far as like you can hook up a different speed sensor input. I know there's a sensor on your transmission. But I just went with the wheel speed sensor. And right here, this scale, only when you're moving is when it shows the numbers. But it'll show you different uh, frequencies for each gear. And say first gear and I'm moving, it'll show me 18 and a half hertz on this scale. And every gear is different and you have to input that number, gear one through six, and you see why they're, how they're all different numbers. So 18 and a half is the top of first gear. Yep. Well, that number is steady. You put in, you start moving in first gear, it stays at 18 and a half, roughly. Oh. You can be plus or minus a half, maybe even one. Yeah. Hurt, or whatever that is, hurts. Mm hmm. And it'll still read it. Yeah. Right. So the wheel speed sensor is like kind of a dirty reading because it's just not like a real clean. Yeah. So you use that to set up your boost by gear? Yep. So, so you had to have them set up first. Then you got smart since I've been gone? Yeah. Shoot. All right, so the boost right here. Where? Okay. If you want to do boost by speed, use this scale down here. I believe it's that one. So kilometers per hour. This is the duty cycle right here. So if you're running 100% of the duty cycle, which scale is over here. Duty cycle reference. So it's all 20. So I'm aiming for 20 PSI basically. Gotcha. So if you're doing it with the speed, you input each, that's like a percentage. So say from zero to 40 kilometers, I wanted it to only make, you know, oh, 50%. So I could change that to 50, and it'll only use 50% of the duty cycle, which I don't know what that is exactly off the top of my head but huh i didn't use the speed i did boost by gear so that's why i had to input all them numbers in the variable speed page yeah for each gear so right here is the uh gear scale oh. so i'm running 20 percent of the boost in first 45 in second and i'm going full out from third on. because it won't spin because it does spin a little bit in third on the street but on the track it don't spin huh but and what's your max boost? 20. 20. Well, 
I've gotten up to, uh, I think it shows it. What's the max you've seen? Well, you got a couple gauges like up here. On your, uh, it's right color. here, log book. Highest RPM I've gotten, 72, 69. I don't know. Yeah. It's set at 7,000, but maximum coolant temperature, intake temperature, time of full throttle. 266 kilopascal, whatever that is. Yeah. I think that's, that's the max boost it's ever read. Huh. That might not be right, though. Yeah, shouldn't that be 2.6 bar? That's a lot. Because 100 kilopascals. Unless it's like a different reading as far as boost pressure or something. Because I'm pretty sure 100 kilopascals is one bar. Well, that's how you set up the boost in the uh, launch control. Shoot. Just like you the... need to get the, uh, the shift cut. The shift, what is it? Where it, um, new lift shift. You need to get that set up in here because you also have that WAP box. Yep, that's that the only thing I'm using on the WAP box. But since you got this, but you have been figuring out stuff. Yeah, I mean. And now you gotta concentrate on I know the on video that. is only like 15 minutes long. So Wait, what, what kind of, where'd you get the videos from? Evan's and Performance And what is it, like 50 bucks? 50 bucks a month. And you got access all. So I've been watching nice. all the ECU Master videos. Yeah. The videos are good. It's worth buying. Yeah. They're a little boring trying to watch, but if you're real trying to learn, this dude knows what he's doing. I mean, you're able to set your stuff up with it. But just by buying that, I can watch all of the AEM courses, all the Hall Tech, all the Hunt Data. Yeah, I'm sure. I can watch all of these. 16-bit Subaru. Oh, shoot. That would be nice for the Rumble Max ECU, stuff. G4X, Link, a bunch of Evo stuff. <laughs> this thing's a beater. Where are we going? We're getting an engine. <laughs> what, kind, what kind of engine? Uh, boost? Uh, you know where it's at? Yeah. It's gone? It broke down. Oh, there it is. Hey, let's see that shirt. Doing donuts. <laughs> I'm about to roast you. Alright, so, so so tell us what's up with this engine. It's a 3.2. 3.2 VR. Alright. Um, must put a 2.8 crank in it with yep. custom rods and pistons. Yep. Make it a 3 liter. R30. And it's gonna have like 1200 horsepower. And what are you gonna put this in? What kind of trans? Uh, mounted to a Nissan CDO9 transmission. And just twin, some... twin disc clutch? Yeah. yeah, probably like FX 850 or something. And uh, rear end, 9 inch? 4 9 inch, probably. Some are common, strong. What car? I don't know, something definitely rear wheel drive. It's gotta be something cool too. Yeah. You can't be having no freaking basic. Uh, I want an old Subaru Brat, but them things are small and they're unibody, so I'd have to like. Yeah. I'd have to beef it up. Reinforce. Let's start getting this thing. All right. So also, I'm gonna point out this is where he got them big old calipers from. This uh, Tig One. What year's uh, Tig One fit? 05 Torre. So the Torregs have the six piston and four piston uh, 17Zs. And dude, they're gone fast in the junkyard. People are after them. All right guys, so I'm at the auto parts store now. The torque converter bolts that hold that engine to the transmission, this is a Torx 50. And dude, it's a 55, because it's I get it up in there and it's a little bit loose. Um, this Napa that I just stopped at was literally five minutes down the road. That, that socket was like eight bucks. And now I'm going back to the junkyard now, which is where my brother is. We're gonna freaking get this engine out and we're gonna make some power. All right guys, we got it. And stick should be coming around here with the engine and uh, got the tools. Shout out to the Tiguan for the brakes and for the engine. So here we are at the junkyard. So this is our setup. We got the VR crammed in the back of the soup it's uh I think it'll be all right 
gross. I had to hop in the back. I'm sitting in the back seat. <laughs> Holding this engine up. Alright guys, we're driving the boost. Going to Cletus and Cars. And uh, dude, it's cold up here. If we don't make it to Cletus and Cars. Oil's good. I came all the way up here. We're, we're for real driving this? Is it gonna make it? <laughs> you just wanna drive this so you can hit Andy like oh, in the parking lot. That poor Sub, dude. Hey, that thing that engine sticking out. Hey, people were looking right at me yesterday <laughs> when I was holding that thing up. <laughs> now they were looking at the engine because it's so. Yeah, but that. What, you think you're gonna win a contest in the parking lot? Alright, just filled up. Reset the miles. What, what uh, MPG you think this thing will get? Mm. Just cruising on the highway. Yeah, don't get in it. And Six, then, uh, 16. Right, guys so we just got back from cletus and cars and we did a little mpg test on uh shtick's car here which has probably like close to 440 horsepower uh, right around like 14 to 14 one air fuel ratio yep and we got 94.8 miles miles divided by 3.8 we got 3.8 gallons yep we made 24.8. Close to 25 MPG. 25 MPG. And you got over 400 horsepower. <laughs> yeah. So Cletus and Cars was sick. Um, we've been there all day. My face got a little bit toasty, actually. I got a little bit burnt. But um, yeah, freaking Booster Boys was there. PFI was there. Um, Angel Motorsports was there with their little rotaries. Mm -hmm. Banking off the anti-lag like the whole freaking day. Burnout box was sick. Um, 
Brent drags. threw down the demolition drags. It was sick watching the uh, the regular just drag stri strip. Yeah, All the guys running. The they had some fast cars. Jamie's uh, Honda was running like a nine six, I think. Yeah. Nine eight. Something like that. Dude, it was fast. Get it, get it. Yeah! Here it is in all its freaking glory. We just took it out of Stick's car. It's the night before I leave. It's like 11.30 at night. And when I come back, you better have a set of pistons, rods, the head done, the block board. There's another 2.8 block over there with a 3.2 head. Um, yeah, dude, hopefully next time I come back, this thing will be ready. Um, I'm going to be back in like two and a half months. <laughs> Wait!